I've had this MicroShift Advent X on my bike for over two years now. There's some things I really like about it and a few things that I don't. So let's get into it. All right, so long-term review on the MicroShift Advent X. Like I said, it's been on the bike for over two years now, so that's gotta tell you something about how much I like it, because if I didn't like it, it wouldn't still be on here. But in this video, I wanna get into some of the finer details of each of the different parts that make up this system. And we're gonna start with a couple of the things that I do like, and then we'll talk about some of the things that I don't really like. One of the major things that makes this group set appealing is just the price. It's around $175 for the shifter of the cassette and the derailleur. Obviously, you'll need a chain to go along with that, and if you're running a two-by setup, you're either going to need a new crank set or just a new front chain ring, depending on the compatibility you have. And for that $175, you're getting a wide-range 10-speed drivetrain. And when I say wide-range, we're talking 11-tooth to 48-tooth on the cassette, and I've never felt like I've needed an easier gear. I know some of these other drivetrains are 50-plus on the easy gear. But the 48 tooth is just fine for me, and I think it's probably fine for most people as well. The weight is another thing that's really appealing about this drivetrain. Between the three things that I mentioned before, it's 857 grams. Now, if you're not really counting grams on your bike, that doesn't really matter too much to you. To me personally, it does matter. And that 857 grams makes this thing just a little bit lighter than SRAM GX, which, as you probably know, is, I don't know, three times the price of this. As far as compatibility goes, the cassette is meant to go on a standard Shimano HG style hub. It's the hub that's been around for ages and ages. Uh, now, if you've got a SRAM setup on your bike that is GX or better, then this won't be compatible because you'll have a hub with an XD driver. Also, some of the higher end Shimano drivetrains, uh, they have their own micro spline free hub body on that. Uh, but either case, if you've got those really nice drivetrains, then you're probably not gonna be looking at this anyway. Okay, so you might be thinking, Wide range, cheap, what gives? Maybe it just doesn't shift well. In my experience, it actually shifts really good. Um, there is one tweak that I have made to it. It's a 10 speed, but I'm running an 11 speed chain on it. And I really do think that makes a difference in how noisy it is and actually how smooth the shifts are. And on top of that, I can give you a tip about the chains too. I've tried a SRAM 11 speed chain, wasn't really that smooth. Uh, this KMC, I'm not really sure the exact model it was basically one of their cheaper KMC 11-speed chains. Seems to be smoother between those two. But anyway, it shifts well, it's, it's pretty smooth, it goes into the gear you put it into. I mean, there's not really much else you could want other than that. All right, so now let's take a closer look at each individual part of this system. First, with the shifter, there are actually two options you can choose from. There's the Pro Shifter, which is what I have. It's, I think, maybe like seven or eight dollars more, so really not much at all. And basically, it just gives you a little rubber pad on the shifter, which is kind of nice to have. The feel of the shifter itself seems fine to me, although I don't really have a lot of high-end stuff to compare it to. But, you know, it's got a nice little clicky, tactile feel to it. When you are shifting up the cassette, so down shifting, there is definitely some play in that lever before the click happens. Although I do believe some of that's intentional because... You know, if you say you're riding along bumpy trail, mountain biking, obviously, you got your finger hovering by that lever, the bars are moving around on you. You don't want any little motion of your thumb to actually make that lever click before you want. So if you're hovering there, it's got a little bit of play into it. Shift it when you're ready. You know, obviously it's within the range of your thumb and it, it works just fine. Now onto the cassette, and there's also two options for that. There's one cassette where it's all steel components, and that one is considerably heavier than the one that I have, which the two highest gears are actually made of aluminum. This cassette that has the aluminum higher gears is actually a big part of what makes the system so light, although that does come at a little bit of a cost to durability. This is the second cassette I've had on this bike because I bent the teeth downshifting and maybe not letting up enough on the pedals, but bent the teeth going into that second to highest gear. And, you know, luckily MicroShift was very easy to work with. They warrantied it, no issue. Uh, and the second one, you know, I've obviously been a little more gentle going into those higher gears and I've had no problems with it since. And I would definitely stick with this one uh, versus having the added weight of the all steel cassette. Now to the derailleur. And this is where I've had the most problems with this drivetrain. This is actually the third derailleur that I've had on this bike in this two year period of time. Although the first one I smashed into a rock and kind of bent it and messed it up, broke off the switch uh, that controls the clutch. So I can't fault MicroShift for that, and I paid to buy a new one of those. 
So the second derailleur that was on this bike was fine for a little while, and then it started to develop some play in one of the pivot points, um, actually where it kind of goes through the body of it and into where the clutch is and everything like that. And it developed enough play that it would move to a point that the clutch would not even engage anymore. So I got back on with MicroShift on their support. I even sent them a video showing how much play it had in the body of it. And you know, they sent a new one right away. So on this third one that's now on here, it has still a little bit of play in that same spot, but not enough to cause the clutch to not engage or anything like that. Um, so it's been working like it's designed to, but that kind of brings me to one of the other things that I don't necessarily like about this drivetrain, and that's how the clutch is designed. It's a ratcheting system, kind of like a ratchet wrench or actually like the hub in your bike. And MicroShift says that they've done that for durability, unlike kind of these tension clutches that are in a lot of other systems that can wear out over time and just they, they have less tension on them the longer they're used. With this system, that's not really going to happen. But the downside to that is very similar to the free play in a low engagement hub is there's a area of free play before the clutch engages. And this changes depending on what gear you're in, how much your suspension is flexing, basically just where that derailleur is in its range and its relation to the little pawls inside and how much free play it has before it engages that clutch. And so sometimes you could really have a lot of free play in there and your chain can be flopping around definitely more than you would like it to. I've never had a drop chain with it, but it makes a lot more noise than for example, the SRAM NX 11 speed that I had and more noise than the SRAM uh, 12 speed SX that I had. And because of the design of it, there's not really anything you can do about that, at least by tuning it, you can tighten the tension on the clutch, but that has no effect on that free play range at all. Now, I would imagine that there are some things that MicroShift could do about it if they wanted to. For instance, the little star wheel that's inside of it, and I'll, I'll actually pull my old one apart because I want you guys to see what's on the inside of it. Um, they could possibly put more teeth on that and then it would give it less free play before the clutch engages. Since we're gonna be looking at this derailleur a little bit more closely, first of all, this is a switch for the clutch. The clutch is on here. If you switch it the other way, yeah, like I said, even this whole thing is just kind of messed up because there's too much play in it. Switch it down, no tension, back up. It's where you get the more tension in it. If you ever did need to adjust the tension on the clutch, this is also what you would do. Take these couple screws out, very simple. And then from there, all you would need is this little Torx bit to go in here and you can tighten a little bit and it will add more tension to the clutch, obviously when the clutch is engaged. I'll take a few more things apart just so you can get a better look at what's going on on the inside. Now with those pieces removed, the little paws are actually going to want to shoot out sometimes on their own, but you're looking at a little spring and a little paw, and that goes into this ring with the teeth on it. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the range of free play before anything happens on this. Uh, so there's a little bit of motion. You'll see it right here, you know, before those teeth actually engage and that tension is brought in. And now you'll see when it popped back, there's a lot less tension in this position. And it just kind of all depends where it is. And, you know, obviously when it's on the bike, the, you know, the entire range of it's being moved. So maybe it's here and you see all that motion that's happening before some, before that one clicked in. Now one of them's clicked in, not all of them are. They kind of go in in phase, but there's definitely that dead zone of nothing happening and your chain kind of flopping around. So that's my long-term review on the MicroShift Advent X. There's definitely more things I like about it than things that I don't. However, I do have an idea on how to fix the issue with the clutch on the derailleur. Uh, fix might not be the right word. I'm more like replace a part of it to make the entire thing better. So I'm really interested to see how that's gonna work out, if it even will work at all, but I will post a video on that. So subscribe to this channel and hit that little bell notification thing so you'll be notified when that video comes out. If you got anything useful out of this video, please give me a thumbs up. Stay tuned for the experimentation that I'm going to do, and I'll see you next time.